Runic has managed to merge its way into one of the coolest combination decks of the format. I think 30% of you guys have not smashed the ever-living crap out of that subscribe button. Smash it so we can climb up the 100k ladder here. The Detroit Regional Breakdown has, well, it's here from the side deck. Uh, when we get down to deck profiles, you have sources and you'll have links to the videos down below so you guys can double check those as well. So what's going on here? with Detroit. Well, Danger Tier Elements ended up winning the regional. I, I'm not really surprised about that, to be honest with you. This format has definitely shifted gears to the fact that Tier has become the better deck of the format, all right? Like, there's really no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Like, you will continue to see a domination, it looks like, in that regard, at least for now. Now, second place here was Trickstar Frog Sprite. Now, I don't know if a lot of you guys have kind of noticed, but if you see, you know, a mention of a Trickstar Frog Sprite, um, it's where they use the Trickstar Field Spell to search for the Lily Bell because it's a free special summon. You add that thing off of the Trickstar Field Spell, it says when this card's added from your deck to your hand, it special summons itself. You're like, oh, okay, you know, free chicken tendies, ladies and gentlemen. We also had double branded tier laments for third and fourth place, which is actually kind of cool overall. Um, seeing that the branded package kind of is hit or miss. On the regional level, it, it's fine. You, you do see like this continued support line for the branded stuff finding its way in here, but I like the YCS higher level. You tend to not see a lot of it. Like, pure feels a lot better in longer tournaments, I feel like. Now, we had Frog Sprite, okay. Danger Tier Element Sprite. And then it's listed as a DDD Adventure Noah Punk Sprite deck. I wanna, I, I don't think we have that list on hand. And then we also had a Frog Live Twin Sprite deck as well. Now, there's a runic list within the confines of this that we'll talk about here in a second that Grim posted, but I honestly think that seeing that the runic package merged with Sprite creates a hilarious deck is very, very interesting. Let's pass on over to Top Cut. All right, the first list we're gonna be looking at here is Tier Laments. I believe this was the first place list. I, I think there's one more trap card that was missing from the profile that we couldn't really see because for some reason, when the Solix came down for the video, they were were just completely like offhand. So do take note that there might be one more. We read the comment section. I wasn't a hundred percent sure when we were putting this together. So I just want to give a little bit of a note there that we're unsure for that. First thing that draws my attention down here, ah, yield skull mark ladybug sent to the graveyard. All right, increase your life points by a thousand. These little end turn shenanigans out here. I mean, if you know something's going, if you're going into time, curious, drop the skull mark ladybug. You're able to kind of capitalize gain some life points. We know that it's not fair, but it's what you're going to do. <laughs> All right. Uh, Danger Package has no Bigfoots for this build, which I think is fine. Even though you're playing 43 to possibly 44 cards, I do see that we are taking advantage of a Zephyrus the Elite in here. It's an extra body to revive itself, depending on how the RNG mills go. Um, I guess also, to be fair, you can drop this off of Curious if really need be. Um, I also like the fact that we, since we are playing... Uh, curious, we do get access to the Griffin play with the anti spell fragrance to beam back the anti spell fragrance or really um, a skill drain if you really need to. Uh, you, either one of these two are something that the Griffin can actually revive off of the curious spot dump. And it's kind of amazing to me that decks like this get to take advantage of the more specific points. For this, So I will just say I'm glad to see that Griffin has been getting a massive amount of play now within, I would say really these side decks, because the more and more value that you can see generated because of a card like this seeing play right now is absolutely hilarious. But outside of that, honestly, a majority of this deck feels very, very standard. Now, this is the sauce. I have seen a couple of people out here messing around with the concept of Sprite merged with Runic, but this is the first list that caught my attention on the regional level because not a lot of people, I guess, have looked at Runic cards and went, you know, we can merge these with different engines, all right? Now, obviously, you have Mystic Minds down here in the side deck. Obviously, you'll be able to kind of do what you need to do, but for what this deck is trying to do, is it wants to establish the field spell, 
he wants to use the resources that the sprite cards give to set up, you know, something like a totally awesome, you know, something like a gigantic sprite to start setting up the larger fields. And then you're going to use those larger engines to effectively filter through the opponent while creating resource-based milling options against the opponent. It's actually kind of a very cool concept because these cards punish your opponent throughout the utility engine. Yeah, you lose a battle phase, sure, but the devastation that you're getting from this, the draw potential three package that this is sifting through for you should be getting the job done in terms of the random RNG that you need. So that's one really big thing here. I mean, my other thing here is like, was the rune one runic fountain enough for this? Uh, I think the answer is it's okay. I mean, you have one of each of the bodies that you can have access to. I mean, this, you should have no problem. Also, the fact that Hugin is naturally a level two meets this deck's requirements so much because it just basically facilitates massive value here out of Gigantic Sprite, like so free at the end of the day. So honestly, looking at this deck, it definitely challenges a lot of the norms right now, but this by far has been one of the coolest builds that I've seen come out on the regional circuit. All right, Brandon Despy. We have a couple top 32 decks here. Uh, only two lists from top eight I that I saw. Um, there might be more out there, but um, from what we've seen, um, yeah, reached out to a couple of people for top 32. A couple friends sent me a couple things here. So uh, the first list we have here is Brandon Despy. Now, if you haven't noticed, Brandon Despy, uh, it, it, it fell off really hard, all right? Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing, but is the deck still able to make top 32? Yeah. When you're looking at regionals right now, I mean, ultimately the goal is to try to get an invite, right? So to see that something like the old build, for example, the only real upgrade that you got from this build to like previous format was Garuda, all right? Like it means that you can use the old same ratios that were available to you you can buffer it out and out and go. Like, you don't even have to upgrade to like play tier element cards. You, you still have the same success volume here that you had previous format. 45 cards tacked in. You still have the Zombie World, Neck World, Banshee in here. Um, the one big thing that I feel like is a little bit different between this and some of the other builds was like, one Guardian Chimera, I think that's fine. I mean, something had to kind of give out for the Garuda value tree, considering, you know, Super Poly Target, amazing card, but yeah. I, I, I want to, there's not much else to really add to this list. It's pretty streamlined for what you see for today's format. Oh boy. So this is a good example of the, the sprite list, honestly here. Now this made top 32. Um, the one big thing, uh, that I think this ended up losing to Adam Emancipator randomly throughout the day for the notes for this, but this is where you have the light stage on activation. You get to add a trick star card. So this is where you add the Lily Bell. Lily Bell says, if this card is added from your deck, uh, except by drawing it, you get to special summon it. So the cool thing with the light stage is this also acts as a deterrent for a potential uh, back row hazard that you might run into. Because remember, this does have the, you get to target a spell or trap card and then it basically locks it. And, and then during the end phase, it, it goes boom. But honestly, I think a lot of builds have been trying to light stage versus one. I think it's, it's kind of up in the air for what you as the player want to mess around with. But just kind of seeing the diversity and the ideas here that are across the format for like the inclusion of this is really good. Like this is just a natural build in to the format. Also, you know, Red Resonator is just amazing for this deck. All right. Honestly, outside of that, also Beat Cup. Hmm. I, I, I know like we've seen it out of Euros, but it didn't, it, it didn't feel like it stuck around too much. So this is actually kind of nice to see that Beat Cup still getting some sort of value out here. Outside of that, yeah, that's your sprite experience for this list. And then last but not least here, we got Sky Striker, baby. Striker actually held on and made top 32. I'm glad to see that Striker, even though it is, you know, a, a Mystic Mind variant, you know, um, the Sky Striker Mystic Mind deck has kind of become one of the worst variants as a late. And I, I really hate to say that because I think that this deck is really cool at the end of the day. Our, our, oh, we're playing... This card, choose two cards, familiar, possessed, and or pos what? What are we doing here? Why? Why is this in our deck? 
All right. Well, I, uh, very, very interesting nonetheless. Patrons, thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.